Hello everyone, my name is Stonesy Boy and welcome back to Reading with Stonesy. Sorry, no funny intro, but today's going to be a short episode, so I'm going to keep it a short episode. Today we are reading pages 41 to 54, only 13 pages, and because we are finishing off the cliffs last time we read, we uh, he lost his son and the robot has been saying very not so nice things to him about jumping off a cliff. So we will see how, how that turns out, because last time... He just tried to burn the bear. But now, we'll figure out what's happening right now. But he had destroyed the bear. You know what he'd seen. When Robert first seen the bear in the store, he thought it was cute. A nice, cuddly friend for his little boy. But now the bear's once charming smile looked malevolent. Like his black eyebrows seen to slant downward, a classic cartoon depiction of evil. And it was all clear now. Robert had brought the bear into the house and Tyler had disappeared. Tyler's disappearance was the bear's fault. The bear could, could, could not continue to exist. Robert fished his car keys out of his pocket. He placed the bear in the driveway in the direct path as the car left front and tire. Then he got into the car and started it. He left only a slight resistance as he drove over the bear. Then he put the car in reverse and backed over it. Then he ran over it one last time, leaving the bear's body trapped beneath the tire. A furry Freddy pancake. He's going back inside the house. He heard the phone ringing. He he could be so stupid to leave his phone inside. It was the exact kind of stupidity he got a title kidnapped in the first place. He ran over to the Yes, he panted out of breath. Mrs. Stanton, this is Detective Ramirez. Are you okay? The... Oops, in the wrong page. It's such an absurd question to be almost laugh. Of course he wasn't okay. His child was missing, and he had spent the last five minutes intentionally running over a child's favorite stuffed toy. These are not actions of a person who was okay. He decided that the question didn't deserve an answer. Instead, he only asked the question that mattered. Did you find him? Not yet, Mr. Stanton, but I wanted to let you know the dog has a scent now, and he's searching for him. We also have tag numbers every white van in the metro area. We're running them to see if any owners of the history of criminal activity. We're handing a heart. We're hard to find your boy. I'll call you in the morning and update you. But morning seemed like years away. Now he's going to make it into morning without Tyler, or without even any information about Tyler. Is there anything I should be doing? Stay close to the phone. Get some rest. Pray if you're praying short. And stay hopeful. Thank you, Robert said. But really, other than destroying the bear, there was nothing he could do. He was helpless. Hopeless case. It was phone hung up the phone. His wrist dropped vibrated. How? He yelled. How? He knew he was going to say. He was certainly attempted to run it over like the bear, but there was still a tiny chance, wasn't there? The watchman had the same connection to Tyler. He would have located him some way. He gritted his teeth and tapped a message for Freddy. Why don't you go to the cliffs? Broken, Robert sank to his knees and cried. The more the bear told him to go to the cliffs, the more suicide seemed like a welcome relief from this pain. Sure, it would be terrifying standing at the edge and looking down at jagged rocks below, the willing himself to jump, but the fall would be so classy he wouldn't have time to think or feel anything. The force would smash into rocks would be so hard and die instantly. Even if there was some physical pain, it would still hurt less than the emotional pain that was ripping him apart. And without Anna and Tyler, what reason did he have to live? He wanted, He went to the cliff. He would join Anna in death. Maybe there were even a possibility he would see her again in some spiritual plane. And of course, it was possible that Tyler was also. The thought was so terrifying that Robert running back to the bathroom, wretched up non-existent contents of his stomach. He leaned over the toilet, like, gagging and sobbing. My little boy, my little boy. Those are the words that were playing in loop in his head. He flushed the toilet and stood up straight. He caught a glance at himself in the mirror, how shocked he, by what he saw. He seemed to age ten years in a single day. His complexion was gray and his eyes were swollen and bloodshot. His face was streaked with tears and snot and impulse. He turned the water in the shower. Maybe standing on a spray would calm him down a little, loosening the painful knots in his shoulders. He unstretched, dressed, and stepped into the stall, letting his hot jets of water part down his neck and into his shoulders. He felt his exhausted mind begin to water. Tyler's first birthday. Knowing the joy of one year old takes into destruction. Robert had gotten Tyler a very special smash cake. He would destroy an addition to a large birthday cake that Robert would slice and serve. Tyler sat in his high chair wearing a con canonical paper birthday hat. When the smash cake was set before him, he crackled in the delight and immediately jammed both fists into it. He brought his fist down on the cake again and again. He eventually gave one of the frosting covered hands an experimental lick. Apparently liking what he had discovered, he dove into face cake face first, coming up with a mouth and face full of frosting. Robert had filmed the whole thing, laughing. Robert then seemed so happy that day. He brought about the day of first of many happy birthdays for his son. The first of many birthdays he and Tyler would celebrate together. He had he been wrong? Freddy's first echoed in his head. Why don't you go to the cliffs? Two years before this birthday party, Robert had earned his first anniversary. The official gift for the wedding anniversary was supposed to be paper. Robert had checked the book in origami from the library. After a lot of failures and frustration, he learned how to make origami cranes. For weeks, he spent spare time. He had folded pieces of paper into cranes. The night of the anniversary, he'd gone to the favorite sushi restaurant. And Robert had presented Anna with a box of 100 origami cranes. One crane, he said, for every year of happiness they would have together. Robert would have known realistically that he and Anna wouldn't possibly have 100 years together. But in his darkest nightmares, he would never dream that it had been only one year left. Where some people were doomed to lose everything they loved. Or is it just Robert's own personal curse? 
the words again. Why don't you go to the cliffs? Robert stood under the shower where the water ran cold. He stared into a shiver. He stirred off his faucet and grabbed the towel. He dried himself off and put it in the bathrobe. And he was shaking, not with cold, but with sadness and fear. How could the bears be threatening him? And he destroyed it. Robert remembered the line from the description of the boy's packaging. Tagalong Freddy is a bear who's always there. Robert threw on an old t-shirt and a pair of shorts and grabbed his scissors and bathroom cabinet. He ran out of the house in the driveway. He yanked the dog under the car, car tire. He laid it flat on his back and stood in the car. He stabbed over and over and over where heart would be, if it had a heart. Where do I have to make you go away? Robert yelled and he kept on stabbing the little bear. Why don't you just die? You're not even supposed to be alive. The bear's chest was slashed to ribbons. Bits and stuffing poked out from between the tears. And Robert had been debating ripping off the stuffing when his wrist was vibrating. He knew it could be expected. He knew it was awful. And a little flutter of hope from somewhere inside him whispered, What if? What, what if the news about Tyler? What if I could save him? He took the time to breath and tapped the message from Freddy. Why don't you go to the cliffs? Why don't you go to the cliffs? Why don't you go to the cliffs? Why don't Robert ripped off the watch and threw it against the pavement, smashing it. Finally, the watch was silent. He picked up the bear and looked at him blankly, googly eyes. All of his rage, all of his pain turned into numbness and somehow even worse. Fine, he said to the bear, feeling more emotionally drained than he ever felt. We will go to the cliffs together. It was the only logical thing to do, Robert thought. Robert was empty. He was a shell, like the house had burned so that all of his insides were destroyed. In the night, he not so look, not looked so bad from the outside, but really... There was nothing left to save. It was time to bring a wrecking ball and final demolition. It was just a formality. He picked up the bear and went into the house. In the kitchen, he filled the cat's food bowl until it was overflowing and put an extra bowl of water. That should hold Bartholomew until the police discovered Robert's body and came to search the house. The police would turn the cat over to the animal shelter. The shelter would find it a new home. It had never liked Robert anyway. Robert toyed briefly with the idea of leaving a note. But who would read it? Who would care? If he had anybody left to write to, it... Wouldn't be going to the cliffs in the first place. He grabbed the bear and walked out the front door, leaving it unlocked to make things easier for police and arrive to investigate. With tag along Freddy in hand, he walked toward the cliffs. The night sky was changing to black and to black and early morning gray. The neighbor whose name Robert would never remember was already up with this morning's sun. He slowed down to see saw Robert start and jogging in place. Any news about your son? The man asked. The neighborhood gossip machine was apparently working as official as no usual. Robert couldn't bring himself to speak, so he looked, shook his head no. I'm sure he's fine, the man said, which Robert knew was a lie. He, how could the man be sure when the police haven't even had any information? Well, let me know if you need anything. Robert knew the man meant well, but really, let me know if he need anything was an absurd thing to say to someone in Robert's situation. I need my son back, Robert thought. But since the universe was too cruel to help, let me, leave me that. I need to jump off the cliffs. If you can't help me with neither of these things, then you're not, no use to me. Goodbye. The man continued his run, and Robert started running in the opposite direction. But Robert wasn't moving like the man getting some exercise. He was moving like a man trying to... Man getting some exercise. He was running like a man pursued by demons. He ran until he reached the cliffs. He was a beeline for the everybody's called Jumper's Cliffs. He was holding his stall smuffed enemy. He stood in the summit and looked down at the rocky ground far below and felt his stomach drop into his shoes. He had already been afraid of heights, but it was always considered a sensible fear. It wasn't crazy to be afraid of something that could actually kill you. And now, even though death was his goal, he still felt afraid when he looked down. Robert held up a teddy bear and stared at it. This is what you want, right? He asked. Tears clouded Robert's eyes and he thought of Anna dying in the operating table during what had been the happiest occasion of their life, the birth of their own son. He never would have chosen to make an early exit from life. She wouldn't have wanted Robert to make an early exit, neither, especially when, unlike Harry, he had a choice. The living Robert would have been doing since Anna died wasn't really living. Anna would have wanted him for them either. He, she wouldn't have wanted to shout out his friends and eat sad little sandwiches at his desk at work. She would have wanted to go out with his co-workers. He's probably, probably sushi. He wouldn't have wanted to enjoy fatherhood, also enjoy the company of other grown-ups. Anna loved life and loved Robert. She wouldn't have wanted him to give up on himself. But she wouldn't want him to give up on Tyler either. I mean, there were even the small hope that he might be alive. He thought of Tyler and he stretched out his arms up and say, pick me up, daddy. And then he'd giggle and say, daddy, silly. And then they would play a tickle monster, the rhyming game, or read books together. It was easy to get overwhelmed by the daily stresses of parenting, the effort of keeping a child clean and fed and cared for the day in, day in and day out. It was undeniable. The will of a toddler often imposed a formidable challenge, but the truth was that most of the time he and Tyler spent together was great. He wouldn't trade it for anything. If there was one small chance he would hear his little boy's voice again, Robert held up the despised bear and stared into his empty eyes. He drew back his arm and pitched the doll as hard as he could over the edge of the cliff. He spat over the ledge in defiance of the evil toy he almost made him do, of what he almost let the toy make him do. Tyler wouldn't want me to, Robert screamed after a pair of plummeted, and the rocks below. His voice echoed two, two, two in the canyon. Robert looked down at the rocks below and also up to the sky. Dawn of turned the clouds to rosy pink, the color of dress Anna used to wear. He always told her that the dress brought out the rose of her cheek. Anna wanted to live, Tyler. Please, let him still be alive, Robert thought. Wanted to live. The two of them wanted Robert to live, too. Robert looked down at rocky ground beneath him and pink clouds above him. 
Life was so hard, it would be beautiful. The two people he loved the most, and he wouldn't want him to lose any of that. Sun rose. Robert heard the early morning chirping of the birds and cry of some small animal he couldn't identify. The mewing of a kitten, perhaps. He cries for something below him in one of many holes and created shallow miniature caverns of the rock forest. The more Robert listened to the cry, he decided it was almost human. Could it be? Robert's heart felt as though he might be got pounded his chest. He might as well underside of the cliff. It resists the dangerous temptation to run. How embarrassing it would it be if he decided to live and fall off the cliff by accident? If he got closer to the caverns, the cries became more distinct. The high kneeling and wounded animal must be a frightened human child. Robert stood in the front of the opening of the rock's face, hoping that he would see his son and that wounded animal might attack him out of fear. Tyler, he said. Tyler, is that you? Daddy, Tyler's voice, weak from crying, came from a hole near Robert. Daddy, Daddy, come get me. The hole wasn't wide enough for Robert's shoulders to fit through. He can fit through the hole, buddy. You're going to have to come to me. Come toward my voice, buddy. You can do it. You hear scrabbling in the hole. And then, it would have been more than a minute, Tyler poked his head in a rocky opening like some kind of woodland creature. He had it in his arms, and Robert scooped him and hugged him. Tyler was dirty and sweaty and overnight stay in the caverns. But to Robert, he smelled sweeter than anything else in the world. You scared me half to death, buddy, Robert said, holding Tyler close. Why in the world would you run off like that? I saw a doggy, Tyler said, the most logical answer in the world. So you tried to follow a doggy and got lost? Uh-huh. Tyler rested his head on Robert's shoulder. Well, that's very dangerous, buddy. You should never leave the yard unless I'm with you. Promise me you'll never do that again. Okay, Daddy, Tyler said. Robert hoped he meant it. Good, let's go home. Yeah, carry me, Tyler said. And Robert could hear the tiredness in his voice. Okay, buddy. Robert was tired, too. But now he found his son. He felt like he had the strength to carry him a million miles. But Robert Ty carefully walked away in the trumpet's clothes. Tyler said, Daddy? Yes, buddy? I'm thirsty. I bet you are. Your big cup of water as soon as we get home. And can I have a peanut, Nana? Sure. Robert knew his kid must be starving. He was happy to have an opportunity to make Tyler his favorite snack again. Sliced bananas, peanut butter, to dip them in. Tyler's like to eat things when they dip in other things. And I'll make you special mac and cheese for supper, okay? Yummy. Honestly, Robert's mac and cheese wasn't anything special. Just a mix from Blue Box. It was special because Tyler was back and unharmed. They'd been eating it together. From now on, all their time together is be special. I thought it occurred to Robert as he reached the lower close. Hang on a second, buddy. I want to see something. Without getting close to the edge, Robert peered down the direction where he was throwing the tackle on Freddy. The little bear was nowhere to be seen. What do you see, Daddy? Tyler asked. Nothing, buddy. But look how pretty the sky is. Your mommy would used to wear a dress the color of the clouds. He decided to no longer keep silent about Anna. Tyler needed to hear about his mom. Just as Robert needed to talk about her, they always talked to her. They thought about her. The way each other would still be with him. Mommy pretty, Tyler said. Yes, she was, Robert said. Would you like to look at some picture of your mommy sometime soon? Yeah, Tyler said. Tomorrow, Robert decided. He would take a photo of Anna down in the attic. He would put some in the mantle and living room, maybe one in Tyler's room, too. We'll do that tomorrow, then, Robert said. And I can tell you some stories about her, too. Your mommy was very pretty and smart and nice. Daddy's nice, too, Tyler said. He was a high compliment to two-year-old. Thanks, buddy. I love you, Robert said, holding Tyler securely. He walked farther and farther away from the cliffs. I love you, Daddy. Love you, too, buddy, Robert told, said Tyler down to the ground. Tyler slipped his hand into the daddy's, and he, they walked away together towards home. Wow. That was really sweet. <sighs> but, sadly... That is the end of the cliffs. Today we read pages 41 to 54. Not that bad, really. Next time, however, we will be reading, I think, a lot. Reading pages 57 to 80, which is uh, 23 pages. And instead of the cliffs, we are reading the breaking woo. The breaking woo. The breaking woo. The breaking wee. The breaking wee. The breaking wheel. The Breaking Wheel. <gasps> Isn't English weird? But yeah, today was a short episode, so of course next episode is going to be pretty, you know, fast. Or, or I'm sorry, pretty long. But yeah, that's not the part you guys care about. The part you care about is the... <laughs> reading Corner of the Day. So today we are reading about the Cocker Spaniel. A very pretty dog. A very beautiful dog. A very basset houndy fluffy dog. It's a basset hound but fluffy. And very, very fat. Very, very fat. Look at that dog. Even as a baby, he's a little fat. But of course, you can't make fun of something or really support anything without knowing their history. So, today, for the history of the Cocker Spaniel, is that the American version of the Cocker Spaniel is derived from the English Cocker Spaniel. In the late 1800s, many English Cockers were brought into America, but American hunters preferred a slightly smaller dog to hunt quail and other small game birds. Just how small the cocker was developed is not very, entirely clear. Some credit of the dog, OBO II, born around 18, 1880, was the first true American cocker, but other evidence points across the English cocker with even smaller tour spaniels that nonetheless arose from the same ancestral stock. Initially, the English American cocker spaniels were considered varieties of the same breed, and they were officially separated from the AKC American Kennel Co 
Company in 1935. Although cockers were already popular, and the separation of the American cocker surge in the popularity has remained one of the most popular breeds of all time in America. In fact, it was the most popular breed for many years. So popular, it was eventually divided into three color varieties, black, particolor, and ASCOB, or ASCOB, which stands for any solid color other than black. Only recently has it been properly spread to England, where it recognized by the English Kennel Club in 1968, and has gained admirers steadily since. So now that you know the the strange, strange, unknown story of the Cocker Spaniel, which was really just an expanded um, description on the English Cocker Spaniel. Now you're wondering, what's the temperament? What if I want my kids to have it? Is it a good kid dog? Will it protect my kids? Well, the temperament of the Cocker Spaniel is that the breed is known as a Mary Cocker and the name is most fitting. It's playful, cheerful, and amiable, sweet, sensitive, and willing to please, and responsive to his family's wishes. It is not known for retaining its human hunting instincts, but is it inquisitive and will appreciate a country outing. It is special, equally at home in the city where it happily walk on the leash for its uh, exercise needs. Some bark a lot, some are overly submissive. So some are very shy and some are very loud, which uh, sometimes isn't good, but hey, that's just how dogs are. Now, do you understand the things you're going into when you get this dog? So what's the upkeep of them? Well, the upkeep of the Cocker Spaniel is that although it enjoys a romp, the cocker can receive adequate exercise and a long daily walk on a leash. The coat of the cocker requires a greater commitment than in the most breeds. Although pets can be clipped short, in order to maintain a nice coat, it would need to be brushed and combed two to three times a week, in addition to professional clipping and scissoring every month. Special attention must be paid to ear and eye cleanliness in this breed. The profusely coated feet tend to carry debris. The cocker is much a social dog and is banished outdoors would not be accessible. Cockers have a tendency to become overweight, as we can see, of course. Now, if you are a child listening to this, please cover your ears, cover your eyes. Um, if you are an adult or a teenager, please listen up, take notes. Because the health of the Cocker Spaniel, aka the worst part in reading this, is that... Uh, <clears throat> sorry. The major concerns of the Cocker Spaniel you have to look out for is cataracts, glaucoma, PRA, and patellar, p- patellar luxation. Injuries in the legs, injuries in the eye, and can become blind. So those are always major concerns, but I think it's a major major concern for cardiac cataracts because it could become blind early. The minor concerns you'd have to look out for are CHD, entropin, entropine, allergies, seboria, otis externa, liver disease, CHF, ph- phosphofruconases deficiency, urinary stones, cherry eye, cardamuffy, and hydrothyroidism. So basically a lot of different problems, mostly by the signs of it internal, uh, with the example of liver disease. Cherry stones, urinary stones, cherry eye. It's occasionally seen with gastric torsion, elbow dysplasia, and epilepsy. Gastric torsion can actually be fixed by yourself if you know how to. Basically, you just rub the stomach and make sure all the gas passes through. It's kind of a disgusting thing to do, but with certain dogs, you have to, especially ones that can gain weight very easily. The suggested tests are eye, knee, hip, and thyroid. So, keep those always tested. Um, DNA for... Uh, uh, as well as the DNA for phosphofrucokinase deficiency. Good thing to keep an eye on. And the lifespan of them is 12 to 15 years. So they might have a lot of problems, but they can live for a very long time. Now, the form and function of a Cocker Spaniel, although it's very much a show dog, it is the smallest member of the sporting group. The Cocker would be compact and sturdy. Its gait is ground covering, strong and effort. The coat is silky, flat, and slightly wavy, not over long. Except the coat can hinder the dog in the field, the head of the expression are hallmarks of the breed. The expression is soft and appealing, though seldom used for original purpose. The cocker would be still be able to spend a day in the field, should be balanced and athletic. It is true, however, that most cockers now have too much coat for field work. So you might have to shave them if they want to be out on the field, but aside from that, they're all right. Now, finally, for the final part of this episode, we have the tier list. Now, five is the best, or could be the worst. Four is better than average, or worse than average. Three, you're average, you're cool, you're lame. Two, you're worse, you're bad, oh nay. One is the worst and you never want to be, or it could be the best, apparently. So let's get it down. Energy level, exercise requirements, both fat, a three. So they're average, oh average, they take them on a walk. Their exercise is a key. Now their playfulness is at a four. That's about normal, but it's more than average than the average dog. Affection level, friendliness towards dogs, and uh, their pets are out of five. 
They're your friend. They're their friend. Friends of your friend. Friend of your animal friend. Now for the others. You got a four. Ease of training. Watch dog ability. Friendliness towards strangers are at a four. Now listen to me carefully. Basically, this is very simple. They can be friends with strangers. Oh man. Now they can also have training very easily. Now watch them. Watch them now. Well, they watch you. They're a watchdog potential at a four. Not the best, but potential because they're a watchdog potential. Now let's get to the protection. A one. Oh no, they can't protect you. They can watch out for you, but they cannot protect you. That's not good. It never really is. The worst part about it is the grooming requirements. Now that's at a four. That's really high. Groom them every day. Brush them to the side. Now we're at the final, final end. Both out of three. And then again, the cold tolerance and the heat tolerance are average. A three. You know, the end. Now, to end this off, the weight that you would want your Cocker Spaniel to be at a healthy weight is 24 to 28 pounds. Not very heavy. The weight, the height of these animals for a male is 14.5 to 15.5 inches. And for a female, is 13.5 to 14.5 inches. They're very short. Oh my, another type of spaniel next time, which is something you'll learn in the next episode. So, hope you guys have a super fantastic wonderful day. Be polite, be efficient, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed the shorter episode. Um, And yeah, without further ado, I'll see you guys next time.